This is your afternoon tropical weather update for Tuesday, June 12th. The Atlantic remains all clear, but I think we will be dealing with our first disturbance in a while, either in the West Caribbean or Southern Gulf of Mexico within about 7 to 10 days. In the meantime, activity is already on the increase across the Eastern Pacific, where the Hurricane Center is now outlining two areas for potential development, but the one with the greatest potential is located just to the west of Costa Rica. The 48-hour percentages are 30% for development, but I believe those chances overall will be greater than or equal to 50% over the next 72 to 96 hours. The 2 p.m. satellite animation shows some shower and thunderstorm activity moving southward out of Texas and Louisiana, but this activity is not tropical related in nature, so this is not the focus of today's video. The more action is out across the eastern Pacific where we see the two aforementioned highlighted areas. This is the first one, but as you can see, this one has a better circulation envelope already. With convection out ahead of the center of circulation, the center of circulation still appears to be a little bit more toward the east, but give this area of low pressure another 24 to 48 hours to organize, and we very well could be dealing with a system on the verge of becoming a tropical depression or tropical storm. The latest water vapor shows an increasing pocket of upper level ridging directly above this disturbance, and the overall steering mechanism should allow for this area of low pressure to move west-northwest or northwest over the next several days, so interest along the Mexican coast, including Guatemala, should be on alert for at least the potential for heavy rainfall toward the second half of the week. The following animation displays the amount of moisture in the atmosphere from the lower half of the atmosphere from the surface all the way to the mid and upper levels, and this oftentimes helps us point out the areas of best rotation. This was the first disturbance the Hurricane Center was monitoring over the last two to three days, but here comes the new one exiting the coast of Costa Rica, and this will be the main show as we go toward the second half of the week and potentially even into the weekend. The Canadian CMC model does show development of this low pressure area into a tropical depression or tropical storm. One saving grace could be the idea that the storm weakens slightly before landfall or before the storm gets overly close to the coastline, potentially due to the fact that the rugged terrain of southern Mexico could disrupt the northern semicircle of the storm, along with allowing some dry air to filter into the center of circulation, but this is something that we will have to monitor as the storm evolves. The GFS model solution is similar by developing the area of low pressure and drawing it closer toward the Mexican coastline and it also shows a second system trying to push inland but this model may be overdoing things within the monsoon trough as is the tendency of this model. Also notice by the day 5 to day 7 range it's trying to develop an area of low pressure out in the western Caribbean but it apparently develops so far east that it becomes vulnerable to getting picked up by a trough that will sweep across the eastern seaboard and therefore the opportunity for development would be limited as it quickly races off into the west Atlantic and out to sea. However, if any area of low pressure continues to linger along Central America or into the southern Gulf of Mexico or Bay of Campeche, a ridge will replace that trough soon after along the eastern seaboard. If this were to occur, then as we can see here as outlined by the Canadian CMC model, as we go into days 8 and especially day 9, look here we have a developing area of low pressure near the Yucatan Peninsula and by day 10 it is forecast to deepen down to 998 millibars which would be roughly a tropical storm moving northwest toward the Texas and Louisiana coastline. Now just keep in mind though that the CMC is not a very accurate model and this is a 10 day forecast solution and you can see that there are two general forecast scenarios. The one that we saw by the GFS would be much less intimidating while the Canadian CMC would at least support the idea of tropical mischief in the Gulf of Mexico. The ECMWF run from 12Z this morning is taking a middle ground approach to the two scenarios. This is looking at the current time, but as we advance into day one and day two, much like the CMC and GFS, it is also developing the area of low pressure in the eastern Pacific into a tropical depression or tropical storm. And then by 72 and 96 hours, it is approaching the Mexican coast. So again, interest there should be at least on the alert for the potential for heavy rainfall, especially in the two to five day period. And then advancing into day five and day six, we see that the areas of low pressure linger around Central America and coastal Mexico throughout the remainder of the five to seven day period. And then advancing into days eight through 10, we also begin to see an area of disturbed weather at least advancing northwest toward the Texas and Louisiana coast.
One can see the pattern evolution even better if we turn to the 500 millibar forecast from the ECMWF model beginning at day 6. You can see much like what we saw with the GFS, it also promotes the idea of a significant trough off the eastern seaboard and that is why the GFS is quickly taking any western Caribbean disturbance off toward the northeast with no development. However, the area of low pressure could rather decide to move into the southern Gulf of Mexico versus develop in the West Caribbean and therefore there would be a greater chance of this disturbed weather being left behind in the Gulf and as you can see as we go into day 7 and day 8 that trough that was once over the West Atlantic quickly lifts out toward the north and it's being replaced by the subtropical ridge extending into the southeast Gulf of Mexico so any disturbed weather over the southern Gulf or Bay of Campeche would likely want to move north. So that is all for this Tuesday afternoon. Keep it tuned to the 28storms.com homepage for more updates including discussions and the Hurricane Tracker app for more video uploads on a day-to-day -day basis.